heard in the shower so he's at home today coming up to the hospital with me i can't wait to get back to vlogging where i'm like actually like filming the night's nice day and filming me having a coffee and stuff like that and it's just not all talking and bad news but there's just like so much to catch you guys up on that i feel like i need to talk and explain everything but the day today is beautiful about to get Miller up and make Kurt and I coffee and then I'll probably have a shower and get ready and my mum will be down soon. They wanted us to go to the emergency department ASAP this morning. I just feel like yeah it's such a crazy thing for something that might not even be but like I always say I guess this is their job and they can't take any chances and it's better than doing this and something really hectic happening. <laughs> guys i'm dressed and ready to go my mother dearest will be here any minute gosh like between my mum and kurt's mum we've just been having our lives saved the last few weeks so thank goodness for them both and i'm just going to make sure today that i stick to my guns and i don't let them rush to do anything like when they're if they say to me we want to do this we want to do that i'm just going to go can we do another blood test first can we do another ultrasound first like i'm just going to try to get them to do everything they possibly can before jumping the gun and trying to give me that shot or remove an ovary because I have done a bit of researching and things like that and it looks like 40% of cases are misdiagnosed and people lose ovaries or get these shots for absolutely no reason. I understand that it can be fatal um, but yeah it's just weird too because that cyst on my ovary I had the exact same spot with Miller I just honestly think it's a cyst and because I only actually miscarried not last night the night before I feel like they you know what I mean if I just got the bloods done the next morning it probably hasn't given it enough time to drop dramatic I think if they just wait a couple more days it should hopefully start to drop dramatically but yeah I'm just going to just mention all of that to them and just ask a million and one questions but I'm feeling sick in my stomach with nerves so we are here guys <laughs> So I've just seen the nurses and she's like, you are one of the most well-looking atopic patients I've ever seen. So she thinks they're jumping the gun too, which is like so good. This would just have been like so much harder to deal with if I had to potentially have surgery or have that, have that shot. So she's sort of agreeing with me, but now I've just got to pee in a cup and I'm going to wait to see the nurse. So I've just had a blood test done and now I'm about to go in for an ultrasound. So fingers crossed. <music> So we're just waiting for the doctors um, to come to a decision. We went and got the ultrasound done and she's just like, my HCG levels still haven't dropped. Oh my gosh, how confusing. So I got the ultrasound done. The lady was like, I can't tell you anything, blah, 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 but I think I see something. Anyway, now the lady's waiting for a boss to come down to see the scans and they're trying to get me to get the shot done um, and talking about surgery. But I've just asked like, can I wait a couple more days and just monitor my blood levels and see if they drop because I'm feeling fine. And I believe that I actually passed it the other day. Like I explained what I saw and she's like, that does sound like that was the sack, um, what I described. So just waiting to hear everything now, but oh. So we're just leaving now. We've literally been, has it been four hours or longer? probably between four and five hours. I've been in there for ages um, and still in limbo. So I'll explain everything in the car. Okay, so we're in the car leaving now and we've got about a 25 minute drive home. That's probably how long it's gonna take for me to explain everything that just happened. So we went in and they did another blood test and we were expecting that my levels would have dropped dramatically because I had the miscarriage already. Um, anyway, they are pretty much the exact same. So they haven't dropped. So then they did an ultrasound and on the ultrasound they did see something that looked a little bit suspicious. Um, so then we waited for the OB to get her boss down. She had a look and she was like, I'm not too worried about what you can see on the ultrasound. It looks like it might just be a blood clot or something like that. Not necessarily anything suspicious. So then they were talking to me about getting a shot of methotrate. I don't know if I say that right. That's probably the, that's not how you say that. It's method meth or something. Anyways, they're trying to talk us into getting this shot um, that they basically give cancer patients and it kills all the folate in your system. It also, um, you can't get it done if you have like funny livers or funny kidneys and I actually do have a funny liver. Um, I don't think I've ever even spoken about this before but when I had Miller afterwards, I had what they thought was post preeclampsia and my liver was failing. So um, I had to stay in the hospital for like a week after having her to monitor my liver. I really don't want to get that done and they will need to do a test on my liver and everything beforehand and they actually won't do it at 
at all if my liver isn't up to scratch because it's really, really dangerous. It also just kills all the folate in your body. Um, it's not a nice thing to have to do. You get really sick from it. It knocks you around heaps and basically it just doesn't sound nice at all. So I really didn't want to have to get that done. Um, not only that, but once you get that shot done, you've also got to wait about how long did you say to try again? At least three months, like minimum three months. And if you did fall pregnant, then it would not be a healthy pregnancy because you've got nothing in there to support the growth of a baby. And they went on to say that if they couldn't do that, then they would look at doing surgery and they'd basically open me up, see if they could see an ectopic pregnancy anywhere. And if they did, they'd have to remove it. Um, but even if they didn't and they sewed me back up and there was nothing there, then that can make kids in the future hard anyway. There are complications that come with that. So, um, Anyways, she went off and she spoke to her boss after telling us all that information and then we came back and she said, my boss is pretty certain that you are having, having an ectopic pregnancy. By the way your HCG levels are looking, she is like pretty certain that's what is going on. I just, people are probably going to think I'm crazy for saying this, but I'm just going with my gut and I really, really, really don't think that's what's happening and I feel really, really well and I feel great. So I just said to her, I said, can we just monitor my blood levels, just keep doing it for like another week every 48 hours I'm happy to get a blood test done but I don't want to rush in and have that shot or have surgery when there's still a chance that I don't even need it and the lady kind of said to me like she said in most cases I would sort of definitely push and push for the person to get that shot done but she's like I kind of like she could understand where I was coming from and why I didn't want to and as well because I had only just mis miscarried like a couple of days ago she knew what I was saying by waiting for the HCG levels to drop like I just want to wait and give them a chance to drop so everything is still up in the air everything is still in limbo I'm getting more blood tests done on Saturday because today's Thursday that I'm getting more done basically every 42 hours over the next week and they're just going to monitor me then if after the next week um, my blood levels aren't looking good they're going to have to do further tests to check that my liver would be capable to handle that shot that they need to give me and if not then I guess surgery is that what you'd think yeah the only reason they're rushing so much into doing something is because with an ectopic pregnancy if you don't and the where it's implanted if it ruptures in your tubes on your ovary or wherever it is it can be fatal so um, they've also said to me if I feel even the slightest bit unwell if I have any sort of pain even if it's really 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 mild cramping anything just go straight to the emergency department don't mess around with it um, which is exactly what we've been doing I felt really silly last week because I had a tiny bit of cramping going up um, but they said that was really good that I actually did that so that's pretty much just updating our last nearly five hours of what we've just been doing um, just a lot of sitting around waiting for people and still really not any answers um, so hopefully I'm just praying like I just hope that my next blood test on Saturday it just drops like even if it's just by 200 or 100 or something like I just hope it starts to drop and I'll be happy finally back home with my girl I'm just like so mentally drained that I can't even like cry because I'm just like drained like I just that's probably the best way to describe it it's been going on for weeks and they keep telling me you're having an ectopic you're not having an ectopic you're gonna miscarry you're not gonna miscarry and I'm just drained like I just feel defeated so it's basically right now just me waiting until I get sick and then rushing into emergency and um, needing to get the shot or surgery looking like most probably surgery the thing that upsets me the most about the whole thing is just our future um, and as you guys know we've always wanted to have a big family we've always wanted to have you know three to five kids with yeah that's just Kurt and I it's always been my dream to be a mum and I absolutely love being a mum and I mean we're so blessed that we have Miller but that's probably the part that scares me the most and that's probably why I don't want to rush into doing anything because I think I've said this to you guys before, but I've done my research and I know that 40% of cases are misdiagnosed and I know that that might not be me, but I feel like that's more likely than me being the one in 10,000 that could potentially have this going on. So I don't know. I'm just not wanting to jump the gun. Obviously, if I start to feel the tiniest bit unwell, I'm going straight to the hospital. But imagine if I got a surgery done and they said this could potentially be the case. I could do a surgery, open me up, find absolutely nothing, sew me back together and it all be fine. And then I could suffer trying to have kids in the future because of all the scar tissue and I'm having to cut everything open and have a look to see where this baby is if it's even there I also passed something a few days ago and I explained it to the um, nurse and she was like that sounds like that was probably the sack so I don't understand what that could have been too so I don't know I just 
feel like in my heart that they're jumping the gun and I feel like everything's going to be okay. I'm glad they're letting me hold off and wait because all of my symptoms, I haven't got one symptom of an ectopic pregnancy, even though they're fairly certain that's what I've got. I've not got one symptom, which can happen, of course. <laughs> Um, so I'm glad they're letting me just wait and monitor my levels because imagine if I go back in two days and something amazing has happened and they've just dropped. Like, if we can get out of this without having to get that shot or having to get surgery done, I'll be a happy lady. Like, it's draining and hard enough to have to go through this miscarriage. I just kind of feel like it's just dragging on so much and, yeah, it's just hard. It's just hard. Poor Kurt's a little worried because obviously he's worried about me getting unwell and it is, it can be fatal, like they said. And, um, there's not much he can do, the poor bugger. He keeps, like trying to do things but at the end of the day it's all happening in my body so all he can really do is support me which he's been doing amazingly but um I can tell it's really frustrating him too. I hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon.